Hey guys, it's MH Fit Life here, and in this video, we are going to go over the basics of the heart. Alright, so the human heart is about the size of a fist, and it serves as the primary pump to circulate blood through the entire cardiovascular system. Now, there are three major circulatory elements the pump, which is our heart, the channels and tubes, which are our blood vessels, and then the fluid medium, which is our blood. The heart consists of different chambers along with the valves separating them. There are two atria which act as reservoirs or receiving chambers for the blood. The atria will have low pressure and thin walls, whereas the ventricles located below each atrium will serve as pumping chambers. Because of this, the ventricles generate greater pressure in order to pump blood out into circulation and will have more muscular walls when compared to the atria. Also an important fact to remember is that the left ventricle will be thicker than the right ventricle because it must overcome greater pressure in order to pump blood into the systemic circulation. Don't worry, we'll go more into depth on this a little later. Moving on to the valves. There are two atrioventricular or AV valves that separate each atrium from its respective ventricle. The bicuspid or mitral valve, which has two flaps, is located on the left side of the heart, separating the left atrium from the left ventricle. The tricuspid valve, which has three flaps, is located on the right side of the heart, separating the right atrium from the right ventricle. Now, a couple tips to remember this. The easiest way to remember the number of flaps is to just look at the prefixes by for two and try for three. Now the more difficult thing to remember is which valve is located on which side. One way to look at it, if we take the letter T at the end of right and move it to the beginning of the word, we get T-R-I-G-H, which has the letters to create the prefix try at the beginning so you can think of it as right side is associated with tricuspid valve. The way I used to remember the location is by thinking of and answering this question. Which would be easier to hold together the tightest? Two pieces of something or three pieces of something? The answer would be two pieces. So my thinking would be that since that left ventricle generates more pressure, the valve on the left side would need a tighter enclosing to resist backflow. The reason I chose to remember it this way is because it's not only giving me the answer I'm looking for, but serving as an understanding and recall of other information. From answering that, I was able to, number one, determine that the bicuspid valve is on the left side. Number two, understand the function of the AV valve, which is to prevent backflow of blood from the ventricle to the atrium during systole or contraction of the ventricles. And number three, Recalling that the left ventricle pumps blood out the aorta to the whole body or the systemic circulation Which is why it must generate more pressure Okay, now that we understand the AV valves, let's move on to the other set of valves There are two semilunar valves that separate the ventricles from its respective artery serving to prevent backflow of blood from the artery to the ventricle after ventricular contraction the semilunar valve Separating the left ventricle from the aorta is known as the aortic valve, while the semilunar valve separating the right ventricle from the pulmonary artery is known as the pulmonary or pulmonic valve. The heart is composed of cardiac muscle, which is collectively called the myocardium. The thickness of the myocardium varies depending on the amount of stress regularly placed on it. For example, the left ventricle is thicker because it has to overcome greater pressure. When looking at fiber type of the heart, we see that it has a high capillary density, it's highly oxidative, and has a high number of mitochondria. Once again here, it is important to look at form, the way something is, and function, why it's that way. Capillaries are the site of gas exchange in tissues, therefore having a high capillary density allows for greater gas exchange. Fibers being highly oxidative allows for them to utilize oxygen for energy and in order to create that energy or ATP utilizing oxygen, the heart needs a high number of mitochondria. Since the heart is constantly working, sometimes harder than other times, it needs to have the ability and capacity to quickly take in oxygen and create energy to function. Myocardial cells have a small, short, branched appearance with one nucleus. 
They allow continuous involuntary rhythmic contractions and they are calcium induced calcium release which basically means that the activation of calcium release is brought on by calcium. Individual cardiac muscle fibers are interconnected end-to-end -end by regions called intercalated discs, which contain desmosomes and gap junctions. Desmosomes are structures that anchor the cells together so they don't pull apart during contraction. Think of holding your kids' hands so they don't get separated from you at the store. Gap junctions allow for rapid transmission of action potential or electrical signal causing the heart to contract as a single unit. Think of a bicycle chain being moved by multiple gears. Now we are going to take a look at blood flow through the heart starting at the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart serves the pulmonary circulation starting at the inferior and superior vena cava where the blood returns to the heart from the systemic circulation and is deoxygenated. The blood travels from the inferior and superior vena cava into the right atrium, then through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, then through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery. This is where blood enters the pulmonary circulation, traveling within the lung to the site of gas exchange which is the alveoli, after which it travels through the pulmonary veins and into the left atrium. This next part is very important to remember in terms of blood flow. Professors will always check if you understand this in lab and on exams, so if you have zoned out, make sure to pay attention. In pulmonary circulation, arteries will always carry blood that is deoxygenated while veins will always carry blood that is oxygenated and it is the opposite in systemic circulation. So now looking at the left side of the heart, that serves the systemic circulation. Starting where we left off, the pulmonary veins bring blood back into the left atrium. Then the blood travels through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle, then through the aortic valve into the aorta. This is where blood enters the systemic circulation, traveling through the arteries to the capillaries where the gas exchange occurs, to the veins and then ultimately returning to the heart through the superior inferior vena cava. In systemic circulation, arteries will always carry blood that is oxygenated, while the veins will always carry blood that is deoxygenated. Remember to look at blood flow from the perspective of the heart. Veins will always carry blood back to the heart. Arteries will always carry blood away from the heart. Pulmonary circulation is external respiration, while systemic circulation is internal respiration. Lastly, a couple more important parts of the heart. The pericardium is a membranous sac enclosing the heart. The pericardial cavity is the space inside the sac between the pericardium and the heart. And the pericardial fluid fills the space in the sac or the pericardial cavity. The pericardial fluid reduces the friction between the pericardium and the beating heart. Let's look at a quick depiction of the three parts. This ball is the heart and this beaker is the pericardium, while the empty space inside of the beaker is the pericardial cavity. If we take the ball and place it in the beaker and fill the beaker with water, which will serve as the pericardial fluid, it gives a basic depiction of how the parts relate to each other. Now how does the heart get its own blood supply? Well good question. The heart has coronary arteries that provide blood supply to the myocardium or the actual heart muscle itself. And with that, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to smash the like button to help the video reach others and share with someone who you think might find this useful. Let me know in the comments of future video topics or if you would like me to make an explainer video about a certain topic. Make sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos like this. I plan on making a heart series playlist as well as other whiteboard videos on topics related to exercise science just to help out other students. This is going to be the first video in my heart playlist and with that until next time MH Fit Life signing out.